Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the HP10702 trial results. And um, the scope of my talk will be to give you a bit of background, the trial design, the results, um, and some other additional sub-study findings, as well as the conclusions as to why this trial failed. So just to give you some background, um, in 2009, um, we heard that the RV144 uh, study conducted in Thailand um, demonstrated efficacy um, at 61% at, at, at 12 months, and there was waning durability, and um, this was reduced to around 31% at 42 months. Based on this data, um, a Prox Protein Public-Private Partnership uh, 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 were, got together um, and oversaw the development of a modified Prox Protein vaccine program, which was aimed at, um, at trying to um, look at the, the whether we could replicate the efficacy of the RV144 study in a part of the world where um, uh, the, there was a, a great global C, um, a subtype C um, uh, predominated. And we also wanted to see whether we could increase the durability um, of the immune response and also uh, evaluate whether the V1, V2 IgG, which had been demonstrated as a correlative risk and vaccine efficacy in RV14 was um, translatable to HV10702. So this was a 2B3 multi-centered randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of the LVAC um, uh, 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 POX um, vector together with a bivalent subtype C GP120 adjuvanated with MF7, MF59 in HIV uninfected adults in South Africa. Um, there were 5,400 subjects. Um, participants got the LVAC prime at month zero and one and got the um, boost at um, which was the which was the LVAC together with the protein uh, C at month three, six, 12 and 18 months. Uh, we did amend the protocol to give an additional boost at the 18th month time point because we saw some durability issues um, following the immunogenicity of HV10100, which was the phase one counterpart that gave us the go no go criteria to go ahead with HV10702. We tested, um, we did HIV tests every three months for a maximum of up to, of up to 36 months. So they, the two regimens were different. And I'm just gonna show you the difference between the two studies. So you can see there was a difference in the, um, in the LVAC uh, uh, vector. As you can see, um, we adapted it to be more clade C specific. There was a difference in the protein boost. Um, we, um, we, we, we modified the protein boost from a bivalent subtype BE to a bivalent subtype C using 1086 and TV1. Uh, the protein dose was different as well as the adjuvant. Um, the RV144 had alum and we used MF59 in, in 702. The population was also different. The Thai study was a community-based study with low risk uh, population. So people had low risk of HIV acquisition. Whereas in South Africa, we focused on um, a high risk population, heterosexual women and men. Um, the epidemic in Thailand at that stage was, was, was generally um, low incidence in the, in the population. And in South Africa, we have one of the world's largest um, epidemic, epidemics, particularly in young women. So the primary objectives were to, face, to assess the potency of um, 702. And this, was, look, this we did um, at the 24 month um, time period, and obviously this, the tolerab tolerability as well. Um, we also had a secondary objective, which was to see whether the vaccine was durable up to 36 months, and also to evaluate the impact of the full regimen um, on, um, on, on early efficacy um, as characterized at, points, at six and a half months, which was um, uh, uh, um, after the, the, um, the, the, the sixth um, uh, time period and up to 24 months, which is the early, um, the early efficacy. And we also wanted to see whether there was um, a difference of vaccine efficacy, efficacy on different demographic characteristics. So these are the trial sites um, that we used in South Africa. We enrolled from October 2016 to June 2019, and we had um, a huge geographical spread um, of trials ac across the country of South Africa. Uh, this, key, this just shows the schema where we uh, screened over 10,000 people, enrolled over 5,500 people, 
and randomized into vaccine and placebo. This shows you the modified intent to treat um, cohort as well as um, the um, participants who were HIV negative on study at month six and a half and who were evaluated um, thereafter. In terms of the uh, randomization, this worked very well. We saw similar distribution by participants between vaccine and placebo arms at, by sites, sex at birth, gender identity, median age, race, um, uh, uh, full blood counts, um, body mass index, uh, male circumcision, the type of contraception women were on, genital tract in infections and self-reported risk factors. Um, um, overall, and most of the participants in the study identified as heterosexual and were evenly distributed across the study groups. You can see our retention was very good. And this shows you the, the loss of follow-up over time in, in the study. And, um, and um, you can see there was no difference between vaccine and placebo. We had regular DSMB meetings during the trial to evaluate the data. And in January 2020 this year, the trial met the non-efficacy criteria after sufficient follow-up um, at month 18 and a half, which triggered an ad hoc DSMB meeting. At this meeting, it was found that um, there was no difference between vaccine and placebo. And yeah, you can see the um, HIV incidence between vaccine and placebo um, um, in the modified intent to treat, which is from, from month zero to 24, the placebo and vaccine incidence were the same, around three, three and a half, three point four percent. In the women um, in the MRTT um, from uh, zero to twenty-four, you can see it was very high rates of HIV incidence um, in the placebo and in the vaccine arm, and in the men, um, low low rates um, overall um, incidences of one point three percent. So what this um, slide shows is, that, first of all, that the vaccine was futile but also um, demonstrated again, um, the high incidence of HIV in women in South Africa, showing that um, HIV incidence hasn't changed in South Africa, despite um, having one of the largest treatment programs in the world. This Captain Meyer shows you um, the, um, the difference between placebo and vaccine over time, uh, looking at months zero to 24, and you can see there's no difference between vaccine and placebo arm. And this just shows you um, the durability also, um, we did not see any, in um, difference um, in the long-term uh, follow-up and evaluation of the vaccine regimen. And this shows you um, in the month six and a half, so people who were HIV negative at month six and a half to 24, you can see that there was no difference between vaccine and placebo. So we saw no difference um, in subgroups when we looked at, um, at uh, when we evaluated the vaccine effect um, uh, by sex at birth, age, baseline HIV risk score, and body mass index, we saw no difference between vaccine and placebo. Just in terms of safety, this was generally safe and well tolerated. Um, some uh, more re reactionicity in the vaccine as compared to placebo, but the adverse um, events were balanced between the groups and um, the rare adverse events uh, related to study product um, were um, slightly more in the vaccine arm as compared to placebo. We had a few related AEs that related, resulted in vaccination discontinuation. And these were originally rash, urticaria, cellulitis, uh, diarrhea, and headache. Um, we had 18 deaths in the study, and these were not related to study agents, and they're mostly attributed to uh, trauma and violence, uh, which is quite endemic in South Africa. And then, obviously, no congenital abnormalities um, seen in the 163 pregnancies. We had a preamble study, a phase one study, HV10100, um, which was the um, study done to evaluate the go no go criteria uh, for uh, our advancement into this um, late stage efficacy study. And um, the, the HV10100 showed very good immune responses. And um, we saw very good binding antibodies. We saw ADCP, ADCC to GP120, GP140 antigens, and good T cell responses to vaccine matched peptide pools which were of greater magnitude in this phase one study as compared to the RV144. However, um, we did, um, the V2 loop responses um, were always higher in the RV144 study compared to the HV10100 study. So what were the reasons why the study was futile and uh, why do we think there was lack of efficacy in 702? Um, it could be due to immunogenicity differences, uh, which may have arisen from the differences in the LVAC the protein, the dose, the adjuvant, and additional boosters. So these were not the same vaccine, and they were I highlighted earlier on. These were different um, vaccine regimens, 
And obviously the, um, the difference could have been because the vaccines were so different. And that's why we didn't see an immune, a, 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 uh, we saw lack of efficacy in 702. There could have been issues with viral genetics. Um, we had probably saw much higher viral diversity um, in South Africa and a much higher likelihood for the vaccine sequence to mismatch relative to the circulating strains, which then obviously um, led to a lack of efficacy. There are host factors that could have um, uh, been a, a, an issue, potential differences in pre-existing immunity, mucosal inflammation, the microbiome, uh, or gen different genetics or FC receptors and HLA. Um, we think that a lot of the, um, the differences may also have been due to HIV exposure. We saw a very much a higher, more um, um, viral load and more exposure to um, uh, HIV in South Africa as compared to Thailand. And possibly the difference, the, the possibility it could have been that there was just a high threshold of infection, which was impossible to, to overcome. And, and possibly the, the, the huge differences in the, the vaccine regimens may have contributed uh, to um, the issues around lack of efficacy. So what are we gonna do and, and how, what's gonna happen with the um, correlate study? So obviously we are interested into understanding whether there were any subpopulations that may have been uh, where vaccine efficacy may have worked. And um, there will be a civil analysis study and a limited case control study. And this will basically be to to evaluate um, uh, whether vaccine efficacy depended on, in, on any genotypic characteristics of the exposing HIV virus and to assess whether there was any immune pressure from the vaccine on, on HIV sequences. The limited case control will assess the immune response biomarkers in vaccine recipients as correlates of HIV risk and will also assess key vaccine induced immune responses and in focusing obviously on the RV1144 correlates of risk to try and understand um, what, we, what, what went wrong. And these are obviously very critical um, studies to be done to try and understand um, the lack of efficacy in, in 702. We've done some other studies, just looking at um, uh, um, some, some sub-studies in 702 um, at one site. And we found just looking at uh, prevention methods in, in our subjects is that, um, we, that condoms were well known um, as a method of prevention, but not preferred. Um, and I think uh, we need to consider um, other issues. We did provide PrEP for free at the sites, and we also um, did provide the monitoring for free of, of PrEP. And so I think that we had very low PrEP uptake in the study, and obviously um, it's important to look at other innovation um, for HIV prevention such as long-acting in injectables, um, as well as the use of passive antibodies um, and other HIV prevention technologies. And obviously um, what we do need um, in South Africa is a prevention method that's long lasting, is discreet, um, and can blend into um, a user's lifestyle without it being um, too obvious given the patriarchal um, uh, our patriarchal society and the high rates of gender-based violence. So there is a huge gap in biomedical prevention um, in South Africa, which aims aim to re reduce sexually acquired HIV in South Africa. So in conclusion, the uh, HE1072 regimen had no prevention efficacy. And despite standard of care and the availability of PrEP, HIV incidence was high in our study and is high in South Africa, especially in young women. Um, we do need um, and continue need to explore um, a, bi a, a biomedical intervention that can help women uh, reduce HIV acquisition. I'd like to thank all my um, co-chairs, Fatima Leher, Linda Galbecker, and Moho, um, as well as all the study participants and all the, the site as, as, uh, um, team and everyone who worked very hard um, to get the study uh, done. Obviously, it's very important to always acknowledge our funders because without them, we would not have been able to, to do the study and particularly the NIH and the Gates Foundation. Um, it's so important to also um, acknowledge the HVTN and um, SHARP data management and statistics, as well as the CABS communities and stakeholders. These are the sites that were involved in the study and we just want to acknowledge them as well and thank them for their participation. Uh, thanks very much.